Hi everyone. Good morning and good evening to Dynamics Test Five Global Community uh, Webinar. I'll just talk about a little bit about DGC or Dynamics Dynamics Test Five Global Community. So we started this com community a couple of months back with the intention of just creating a network of Dynamics Test Five consultant from Dynamics CRM Dynamics Test Five and every other technology which is related to Dynamics Test Five. So the intention that we have here is just make a platform where dynamic is by consultant and then professionals as well as uh, the uh, partners can interact with each other and also share the knowledge. So we are very successful in that. So as part of the activities of DGC, we have been conducting webinars on every two weeks, mostly on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. Successfully, and we have been successfully uh, conducting uh, other activities as well and now we're just building uh, communities in every city so that we can just conduct physical events as well in these communities also we need help from uh, professionals as well as experts in this domain who like to share their knowledge as uh, on this domain etc so we have set up a website with the url d365globalcommunity.com so where we even have set up a forum at a limited level so where People can just share their knowledge as well as they can just, uh, uh, what do you say? They can just learn about Dynamics Find related technology. So we have conducted a couple of webinars in the past on different technologies uh, like uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator for Dynamics Find, the security concept of Dynamics Find as well as SharePoint. And also we talk about uh, a flow, I mean, flow, Microsoft Flow along with Dynamics Find Power Platform. I'm sorry, Microsoft Power Platform. So these are some of the webinars we have conducted in the past. And we have and more sections on the upcoming technologies on uh, Dynamics 5. I request everyone to please mute your lines. Okay, so when you join the webinar, by default, your line will be on. So I request you to make sure you are muted. And towards the end of this session, you will definitely get a time to just ask your questions. And if you have questions, definitely you can just uh, put it in the chat so that we can take that and we will uh, present that as well. Okay, so I was just giving an introduction about DGC, Dynamics is for Global Community. And we also have a YouTube channel where we'll be sharing the recordings of each of these webinars. So this section is also being recorded. So that's why we are requesting you to be silent while, uh, the, uh, while you're just, uh, being presenting. So we will be giving the recording of this uh, session also on the YouTube channel from DGC, which you can just uh, subscribe as well as you can watch and share. And then we're planning so much things in terms of the community. We are trying to bring in more, more of the expert into the domain and then share knowledge as well as building communities in different cities and etc. So yeah, everyone who are, who are interested to be part of it, you are most welcome. And so it's all about a non-profit non -profit group of people who are very enthusiastic about, I mean, learning new technology and then building a community around it. Okay, so, and today's session is from, uh, Sudeep Chakravarti is a Dynamics 5 expert, solution expert. So we'll be presenting on the topic, working with the Dynamics 5 portals. That's one of the interesting topic of this time. And I mean, we are going to have a couple, of, couple more sections on the same topic, hopefully. So uh, yeah, so he'll be talking about an introduction to Dynamics 5 portal. What are the different types of portal we have, as well as how we can just set up with, uh, we can set up the portal with Dynamics 5. Okay, so hopefully it will be a very useful and a knowledgeable session for all of us. So over to you, Sudeep. Thank you, Firoz. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, good morning and good evening, folks. Uh, thank you for joining this session. Uh, I am I am Sudeep Chakravarti, and today I'll be talking about uh, portals for Dynamics 365, uh, which is um, an out of box portal solution provided by Microsoft. Uh, being said that, let me share my screen. Sudeep, before you start, let me just give you a housekeeping tip. So I request everyone to just mute your lines, please. And uh, towards the end of the session, the session is total of 45 minutes. minutes. So towards the end of the session, we'll give you I um, mean, 10 minutes to ask the question. And if you have any questions before that, you can just put it in the chat. We'll take them uh, I mean, towards the end of the session. And towards the end of this, definitely you can just ask directly uh, when the time permits. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
I hope everybody can see my screen. Yes, Udeep. All right. <clears throat> so, as I said, you know, we are talking, we are going to talk about portals for Dynamics 365, which is a out of box portal solution provided by Microsoft. And uh, because portals for Dynamics 365 is a big topic and it is simply not uh, possible to cover everything in one session. So we will cover it in two sessions or maybe three. And today's session is focused on portal introduction, uh, types of portals and their features, uh, provisioning and administrative administering uh, administrator portal. Um, in our next session, uh, we will cover the architecture, login mechanism, authentication, user profile management, um, web forms, and branding the portal. And towards the end of session, as Firoz said, uh, we will have few minutes to answer any questions if if you have. And if I cannot answer any query right away, I will work on it offline and provide the answer. Um, so before I start a brief introduction about me, um, I have around 15 years of uh, progressive experience in entire software development lifecycle uh, using Microsoft technologies uh, with close to 11 years of Microsoft, Microsoft Dynamics uh, focused experience, I would say. And I'm pretty much living and breathing uh, Dynamics CRM since 2008. And I have worked on different versions of Dynamics like 4.0 and currently on 365. So um, let's get started then. So, so, so basically the first question is, uh, what is Portal for Dynamics 365? So, <clears throat> so Dynamics 365 uh, Portal provides your audience, when I say audience, Audience means they are direct users. Um, that is what, what I mean by audience. So they are direct users your, of your website and they, it provides an online location and to communicate and collaborate with your Dynamics 365 uh, customer engagement environment. And uh, as we know that, uh, that for a user to view CRM data or to manipulate CRM data, the user must be a licensed user. Uh, whether it is a full customer engagement license or a simple team license, but it requires at least a license to view or manipulate the CRM data. So with a, with a Dynamics 365 portal, it provides an entrance or a doorway to non-licensed Dynamics 365 users, and they can go through the portal and basically view, edit, add, delete, um, the Dynamics 365 customer engagement data as determined the portal developer. When I say portal developer means, you know, they basically assign the security profile to the users. So depending on the, um, depending on the privileges, they can take an action on the record, which is sitting in the Dynamics 365 uh, database. And um, depending on the audience, as I said, uh, the direct users. So basically, uh, basically, it, uh, the portal, the development of the portal is geared towards or it is focused towards the customer or your audience or your business partner or even the internal uh, team member or which is like an employee. So basically with portals, we allow the audience to get, uh, to get support if, if there is an issue to, sh to share uh, knowledge guides. Um, uh, we also co collaborate with communities. Uh, they suggest some new ideas, learn more about the product and the services that you are offering. So that's why we need the portal. And uh, for portals for Dynamics 365, as a company and from benefits point of view, there will be, so if we have to see, you know, what is the, what is the benefit from a company point of view? So we can see that there is no new hardware to procure. Um, like you know, no certificates to install or web server web servers to provision, and um, and in few clicks, basically a new integrated web presence, your company's web presence is ready to go online. And if the company have a Dynamics 365 enterprise subscription already, then then they are most likely to have at least one Dynamics 365 uh, portal license already. 
So, <clears throat> being said that, let's let's uh, let's talk about the capabilities of portal. <clears throat> so, the portal, uh, the the Dynamics 360 portal, which is offered by Microsoft, is basically nothing. It's a it's a light uh, content management systems, uh, which is basically entirely um, sits entirely sits on Dynamics 365 data source. Um, this portal basically extends the Dynamics CRM data and display information from various sources. When I say various sources, means various entities um, uh, in one place on the web for external 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 customers and um, partners. Um, because security is a big uh, because uh, you know security is a big deal um, always in the COTS packages. So this is fully. Um, it is, I mean, it is fully secured because of the user security profile. So data, the information or the, the data that the user is trying to access, it based on their user, it based on their security profile assigned. And uh, another part is basically, when we are using portals, we are basically giving the access to anybody who can connect from anywhere and they can see the data in real time. So basically, it is giving the same information, um, that, that, uh, the data that your organization is operating on. Um, this portal, cap portal for Dynamics 365 is only available on Dynamics 365 Cloud only. Uh, back in the day, there was a portal that was available, and it was released one time only um, for on-premises um, development of the portals. Uh, this portal is hosted on Azure within the framework of Dynamics 365. Uh, portal is always tied to one single Dynamics 365 instance and only have access to the data that is residing in that instance. Uh, portal do not own or store any data. Uh, portal, uh, the, so basically the, there is a, there is a, uh, Capi uh, there is a capability which is called page view page views so that is basically capped to 1 million per month view uh, out uh, for free and after that you can buy additional uh, uh, page view levels which is 500,000 increments it's for $50 per 500,000 increments and basically this portal basically caters the uh, customer engagement scenarios so for example if you want to get access to the form for just to submit ideas or product updates, uh, submit support cases or orders, or uh, view the submitted information, uh, for, um, th it could be a simple enough like register for programs or events. And um, so another example could be like you know your users or your uh, users to um, see the invoices or pay bills. So those are the scenarios where the portal uh, comes handy. So <clears throat> let's talk about the portal solution that is available uh, from, from Microsoft. So <clears throat> there are, there are f four types of, uh, basically there are three, uh, three types of audiences and that basically audience, basically, that audience type basically drives uh, portal types. So, um, there are four, as I said, there are three types of audiences. Uh, sorry. Give me a second. Okay. Um, for that, I have to go and show you the portal types from here. All right, so. So if you see, um, we'll come back to that screen later, but I wanted to um, explain that the portal types that is available. 
Uh, the first one is called base portal, if you see here. And it's, this portal is nothing, but, but it has just some configuration to get started. Uh, and base portal can be used once you, uh, once, you, uh, once you want to develop something on your own. So this is for uh, this is base portal. And there is another one called community portal, which as it states, it's for, it's a portal for the community. And basically organization can publish articles. So the examples could be like organization can publish articles to customers, customer can post messages on the forum, something like that. And then we will come back to custom portal uh, in, a, in a minute. And there is another one is called customer self-service. Uh, this is the portal that we are going to, that is uh, widely used and um, this is the portal that we are also going to um, uh, configure today. And this is, um, this portal is basically, um, when we install this portal, uh, basically customer get option and get an option to report issues, incident, case regarding a product or service uh, directly via portal. Uh, and there is one more. So there is four more types of portal, which is employee self-service portal. So this portal is basically internal used only by the employees and the, the and it requires a Dynamics 365 license. And uh, employee self-service module, I believe is best, is, is a best, is, is built on best, uh, built on basically Microsoft Dynamics 365 for talent. That basically helps employees to improve their productivity. So a couple of examples is like uh, time tracking and absence management, um, displaying the remaining leave, um, travel expenses, um, or some download some forms and employee information. So that's what is used for. And there is a partner portal, another one. So this is also like employee self-service, but it is for the company's partner and they can access uh, the company's data without get, without without understanding the CRM, uh, they don't have to understand the CRM, and this is also requires CRM license. So basically, um, uh, partners can post messages on the forum and have discussions. Um, organization can publish articles to the partners. Partner can register, and um, pa partner. So some sometimes there is an approval and rejection kind of. A workflow is required, so there is a um, there is a capability for for that type of thing. And there is, there are two more uh, new th uh, new um, portal introduced, which is called field service portal, which is also a partner partner portal type. And there is another one is called uh, project service automation portal, that is um, again partner um, a partner portal type. So the field service is basically. Uh, customer can view all the service delivery agreements uh, that is created in the CRM, and they can create, they can view, create, edit the account specific assets. And the service, uh, the project service automation portal is basically they, uh, the customer and partners can view the projects using the portal. Customer can view the active and closed projects related to the organization. Um, so all the project specific resources will be, be will be visible. Uh, to partners and the customers from this portal. Uh, let me go back to the slide. Uh, all right. So we talked about portals and solutions and their features. So uh, next thing is basically how to provision a portal. So for that, um, so basically, First of all, you have to be uh, Office 365 um, administrator. You have to be a, uh, that account, you need that account or that license. And for to set up a portal, you have to basically go to office.com. So I already have that um, here. I can pull it up here. So if you go to office.com, you can see if, if your organization already have Dynamics 365, you will see the uh, you will see the instances over there. So you have to click, either you can click from the, here or you can click from here. Both will take you to this admin center. And if you're using the preview, uh, the new preview admin center, 
you have to go and click on all admin centers and then you will see the Dynamics 365 listed here. And when you click on this, it will take you to this page where you can see the instances. So let me go back and show you that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you see that, that, that I have one, one instance only in in this um, uh, in my Dynamics 365, I have only one instance. And when you click on the this blue label pencil, which is called Solutions, you have to click there, and that will bring you to the to the Solutions. And as I said, depending on your audience, you are basically creating a portal. So for this for this session we are going to install um, the port the customer service portal which i will show you here which is already installed if you see if you see it is already installed so i have already installed and basically it takes uh, quite some time to install it so that's why i have the screenshot to show you step by step and i already have installed it so basically when you click so it will when it was not installed you will see the status called not installed and so you will see a blue blue pencil like you know like this uh, icon and you have to install it and then the screens will look like this So when you click um, on install, it basically uh, it prompts up uh, terms and condition. You just accept it, and it will start installing for you. Once it is installed, you will see the status change to installed, and it takes around fifteen to twenty minutes, as I said. Now you have to verify. Um, now you can go to your CRM, and you will see in the so in the solutions in your in, so in your solutions you will see there are a couple of managed solutions that gets installed uh, in your CRM, and um, you will see here if you if you can see my screen you will see there are a bunch of uh, managed solutions are installed that is required for the customer self service portal. So that basically covers up the CRM piece. Uh, of the solutions now we have to basically configure the portal itself and when when the installation is also uh, complete if you go to your dynamics 365 organization you will see um, on the navigation that there is a there is a portal tile appears and you will you will find um, the website content security and other things which comes with that installation now once that is installed let's go back to the uh, once the solution is imported to uh, to the organization we have to now install the application so let's go back to the application so for applications you have to you have to go to the application i believe i've already opened here yeah like this and then you have to basically configure the the portal from here so when it was not configured when it was not configured you will it will show the status as not configured and then you have to basically click click on manage and then it brings this particular screen and let me go back and show you how it looks so before configuring this is how the screen looks you have to provide the uh, provide the name the type of the portal, whether it is a production, UAT, uh, sandbox, development type, and what is the status of this uh, type of the portal. And then you have to give the URL, which, which should be unique. And this is basically a subdomain under the Microsoft uh, CRM portals.com. And if you see the green tick, when you, when you type in, and if there is a domain available, subdomain available, that name, it basically confirms that, you know, that that name is available under this. A domain and then that becomes your URL and then basically it asks you to select the Dynamics 365 instance um, well you could have multiple instance so basically you have to as I said it is tied to one single instance so you have to basically tie up with one of the Dynamics 365 instances that you have 
and the portal language again if you have in if if you have in your um, if you have multiple languages in your dynamics 365 installation then you can see uh, for by default it is lci id is 102 um, 1023 or 1033 which is basically english and um, then you have to select the portal administrator so all the all the administrator who are who are uh, in that instance who are administrator that will be listed here so you can select only one and as i said the portal audience that we already talked about whether you are creating a customer type portal or an employee or partner or depending on what radio button you're selecting the portal type that will be will be will be basically displayed here and then you have to um, uh, deploy and then you have to basically select that and then you can <clears throat> submit the request so when you submit the request, it again takes few, sometimes two hours also. For me, it took two hours to uh, configure the, the to make and to have the portal available for me. So once that is available, then this is how the screen is going to look like. Um, you will see uh, the name, the name that you have provided, and once it is already configured, this is this particular page is only for information level i mean it is only for informational it, you cannot change um, uh, you cannot change any data here so <clears throat> except um, the the portal state we will talk about that in few minutes so basically it gives you the application id and it creates a uh, creates the portal url for you and this uh, this change port, portal state is basically nothing it's basically in the in the uh, the good old days that we when we have our when web server where we have the is web server where we basically can stop the websites so basically this is the same thing which is basically is stop it, it basically stops the portal from uh, for access <clears throat> and let's go back and go back to my system and i will show you how when once it is configured how it is going to uh, look like So as you see, this is now configured and we have not branded it yet. So most of the functionalities, the best part is most of the functional functionalities are already built. So for example, home knowledge base, if you have anything in the CRM that will be displayed here, um, sign in. So we do not have to build anything. They, those screens and the functionalities are already built. Um, so in the next session, we are going to see how to brand and how to create the how to do the registration and how to uh, give a create a user security profile so then we will revisit this um, piece again so now let's go back to the next slide so once the portal is uh, configured the next part is basically maintaining it so um, that is called uh, administ administering a portal. And uh, the first thing that you should know that to manage an existing portal, you must be assigned with one of the following roles. One, either you have to be a global administrator and either, or you have to be a customer engagement service administrator or the system administrator that has been selected during the provision of the Dynamics 365 uh, portal creation. And you also have to understand that, you know, what are the browsers are supported uh, from this portal. So for example, for Windows, um, we have Chrome, we have Mozilla, we have IE, and we have Edge, but Safari is not supported, which is installed in the Windows operating system. And we have a couple of mobile device browsers also, uh, as you can see, um that most of the browsers uh, most of uh, like uh, this android and ios most of them have uh, ha you can they have the capability to install uh, 
uh, different type of browsers. So the, here are the list of the, uh, the, the browsers that are supported in mobile devices. So, um, so if you have to administer the portal, you have to uh, go to the uh, Dynamics 365 administration center page and select the application tab. And you will see um, the, you will see once the portal is configured, you will see uh, on the left hand side like this on this page. Let me show you also. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you will see uh, the portal details and the actions that you can take on the existing portal. And there are a couple of things. And if you are using a trial instance, you might not see the uh, the custom domain and SSL and manage SSL certificate because it's a production type. So these two um, uh, actions are coming in here. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so, um, as you see, the portal details is basically, uh, this has some basic information and very important information, which is like the URL, which is the URL of your portal. And then a then couple of actions that you can uh, take, which is, I said, like change portal state and uh, other things. Um, then portal actions, if you see there is portal actions here. This is the list of actions that you can take, um, like logging, uh, error handling, tracing, restarting, resetting, other things. So let me go, let me go to the next slide. So when you click on that portal actions, you will see there are a couple of tiled um, uh, uh, menus are here. And we'll talk about few of them because I, I wanted to talk, uh, talk about few of the items because those are the frequent tasks as a portal administrator uh, has to do from my, uh, from my experience. So the first one is basically change portal status from the previous screen that we said. Uh, that that I already explained before that it is nothing but it's basically stopping and starting the IS website. Uh, there are there is uh, something called restart and reset portal. So that is sometimes confusing. So let me elaborate these two pieces. So restart is basically it does nothing. It's basically reboots the Azure web application that is hosted in the uh, that it, uh, the uh, it basically restart the portal which is hosted in the Azure. Um, which is hosted in the Azure. And uh, so basically, if you have any problem with this, uh, where the solution is most typically sometimes uh, rebooting the server. So this is basically where um, you click the button. And uh, let me give an example. So before, uh, you know, we use this button all the time to deal with the caching issues, the server side caching. But now Microsoft has already provided the clear cache button, so we do not have to deal with it. But before, uh, most of the times, if there is a issue, so the typical choice is to basically reboot the server, and that's how we did it from, from by clicking the restart uh, button from here. And the reset portal is basically, um, so it's a so so as we understand that portal as a website is on the web server and it is using the Dynamics 365 database. So resetting a portal is going to delete the web server, but does not touch the database, but will delete all the hosted resources associated with this portal. And once the reset operation is finished, the portal URL will not be accessible anymore. And then you have to basically provision the portal again, like redeploying the website on the web server with the exact same website code. Um, pointed to the exact same database. So uh, I wanted to clear this up because this is sometimes confusing. Um, there is uh, there is a couple of other um, there are a couple of other uh, important piece uh, important uh, important uh, menus that we as an administrator we always uh, do that. So one is basically this 
enable uh, enable maintenance mode and view um, the the disable customer uh, customer um, error logs so <clears throat> If you remember the uh, ASP.NET web pages, um, we have, let me go back and show you. So we have the yellow screen where, where we pass the custom error messages. Um, so have, uh, to have a nice uh, uh, you know, error screen, we basically create a custom error messages. And, but to resolve sometimes, you know, we have to, uh, we have to uh, take that off so that we can see the yellow screen and uh, basically um, see what is the issue that that uh, that stack um, so th these are these are the two mechanisms that you use for disabling the custom errors and <clears throat> there are a couple of uh, so once the portal is already um, provisioned and uh, ready for use from here you can change the base url if you want to change the url um, you can change the URL from here. And another thing is basically I wanted to talk about, which is not in this slide. Uh, basically, as you have seen here, so we have, um, while we are installing that, you must have seen some version number of the, of the portal that you are installing. But Microsoft is always, uh, always adding features to the portals. So how you can basically uh, upgrade a solution um, which is available uh, for, and you can basically deploy the CRM deployment to your CRM deployment. So let, to, to show that I have to go to here and I will show from here. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> so if you see there is a, so basically to upgrade the portal solution, there are a couple of steps that needs to be completed. First, you have to navigate to the Dynamics 365 admin, admin, admin center, uh, which is of course with the administrative privilege. Then basically you have to go to the instance where the portal is hosted. For me, this is the instance, so I have to go to this instance and then I can see the solution here. So when I click on the solutions, you will see uh, the manage your solutions. And then basically the select the solution package that was previously previously deployed. So for me, it is this one. And but I do not see anything called upgrade available, just like this, just like this one. I do not see anything. But if there is an upgrade available, then it will show that the upgrade available. And basically, you do not have to do anything. You just click on that upgrade button, like from for this solution. The same thing. If it is available here, you can click on that upgrade button and. Uh, it will basically start upgrading and the solution will change to install installation pending followed by the installed and when the upgrade process is complete it basically says installed so that is how we apply the just like the roll ups that we apply in dynamics 365 this is how we apply the uh, apply the upgrade to the solutions from here for the portals so we talked about the portal actions. Uh, another important piece from an administrator point of view is basically to, to see if there is an issue, we have to basically check. So Microsoft provide a, a portal checker, which basically gives you, a, it's, it's a self-service diagnostic tool for the portal administrator. And when, when you click on that, um, it, when you click and when the, the portal checker is complete, it gives you a result in a grid view, just like this. And it has three columns called issues, categories, and results. So the issues is basically the high level or top level issue by the customer. For example, performance issue, you can see they are listed here. Uh, category is basically displays the top level area where the issue can be categorized, whether it is, um, <clears throat> I mean, a startup issue or some other kind of issues or cache invalidation issues. And the results is basically says that, you know, whether it is a, uh, for me, it is all pass, but sometimes it gives you error and warning. And you can always refresh the results from here. So from an administra administrating point of view, this is also imp important uh, uh, piece of action that you have to, most of the administrators have to take. <clears throat> And by that, I conclude my 
uh, uh, presentation. And if you guys have any question. Okay, so guys, if you have any questions, you can just uh, open up your mic and then you can please ask away. So uh, we have a limited time for the questions, question answer session. So you can please make use of it. And also you can just uh, enter your questions in the chat.